So I would like to talk to y'all about the technologies that I am using to build Dinnerbee. And if you want to check out more about the application itself and all the features that are going into it, I'll leave a link up to the first devlog that I did, which kind of explains more about the application as a whole, because this video is really just going to be about the technologies that I am using to build it. I want to preface all of this by saying that honestly, it really does not matter which technologies that you use to build your application. Truly what matters is that you are able to come up with a finished product. And this can be some disgusting mishmash of technologies, or it can be a really elegant tech stack. The customer isn't going to know what type of technologies you're using. They just want to have a functioning app that they can use. So what that means for you as the developer is you should choose tools that you are familiar with that you can be efficient in and that you know you can deliver a quality product with. For me, this means using technologies that either I studied when I was in school or that I use in my day to day as a software engineer and having the experience as a software engineer and using these technologies in my day to day has really made me a lot more efficient. And I'm like very confident that I can go and use them and build my own applications with them and know that I'm using them the correct way. Cause truly I do want to build this as fast as possible. So using things that I'm familiar with and that I know I can deliver are always going to be the best bet for me. So let's just hop right into all of those technologies that I'm using. And I'm going to go through these in the same kind of order that I did in my 11 steps that it takes to build a software application process. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out after this. But I'm essentially going to walk through every single piece of that process that involves the technology and describe and explain the ones that I am using for Dinnerbee. So starting off, let's talk about UX UI design. If you are a solo founder and you are doing this yourself, kudos. Uh, I'm a software engineer and I'm trying to learn design and it's very difficult. So either this is something that is contracted out to a freelancer, or if you're doing it yourself, you may be doing it in a software like Figma. And that is the technology that I'm using for UX UI design. So essentially before I started building the application, I created a set of UI mocks that would be the basis for how I designed my application. This had um, really just like the main features, the main screens that I wanted in my application. And I mocked those out so that I could have a good frame of reference for when I started building the front end. But this is also a great frame of reference for the back end of my application as well. So I'm going to transition now into once I had my mocks, I was able to hop into the next technology that I'll talk about, which is the database design. And for this, honestly, I just use pen and paper. Once I have my UI mocks, I know what type of entities my application will need. So for this, I'll just take out my notebook and start sketching out what those entities will look like and also their relationships. My background is in relational database designs. So that is the workflow for me. It's create the entities and then create the relationships between those entities. And this diagram may evolve over time and likely it will. But for me, it's very helpful to get these entities down first so that I have a good frame of reference before I even start building my back end. I can tackle all of the problems that come with dealing with data inside of your application up front. And ideally, this will save me a whole lot of pain down the road. So that's the database design. But what database am I actually using? And the answer is Postgres. Postgres SQL has been my database of choice throughout my career, uh, throughout any personal projects that I have created. It's just something that I'm very familiar with. It's what I learned when I was in school. It's what I've used throughout my career. Um, and it just makes sense to me. I, like I said, I think about data in a relational way. NoSQL databases like DynamoDB and MongoDB continue to gain traction and are very popular throughout the industry. Uh, and I've dabbled here and there, but I know if I want to build things quickly and I want to do them how I'm comfortable with, I'm always going to go with a relational database and Postgres is always my choice. So now that I have my database schema designed and I know which database I'm using, I'll then go into building my backend. And for this, the language that I use is Java and the framework that I use is Spring Boot. And this is something that I actually have not used professionally, uh, but it was something that I learned while I was in school and just continued to learn uh, on my own. And Spring Boot is great because they kind of just sat down and they were like, hey, all CRUD applications are essentially doing a lot of the same things. And they were like, hey, could we just come up with a framework that simplifies a lot of the mundane tasks that go with creating CRUD applications. And Dinnerbee is not complicated in any way. It's really just a set of entities that have CRUD operations. There's a few more bells and whistles, but for the most part, like that's it. And Spring Boot does that incredibly well. 
It is also really easy to integrate with Postgres and really easy to work in a local environment uh, so I can get all this up and running and, and making sure that everything works. So that has been really great for me. Something else that's great about Spring Boot, and you should really just think about this whenever you're contemplating technology choices, is what is the documentation like? How robust is it? How detailed is it? And what is community support like? Does it have a lot of users? Is it constantly getting updates and being maintained? And if you can answer yes to all of these questions, then you know that it's a good choice because if you're going to run into problems and you're going to want to be able to find answers from people who had similar types of problems as you. And so just do yourself a favor and just use something that is widely adopted. Another core tenant of the Spring framework is Spring Security. And so this is a really robust out of the box solution for handling um, in my case, it's JWT authentication, and it is the way that I handle users in my application. I don't plan to use any OAuth 2 authentication as part of this application. I just want a standard JWT flow, and Spring Security does this incredibly well. It's well documented. There are tons and tons of applications that are using this type of authentication flow. I just wanted to keep it super simple, and Spring Security allows me to do that very easily. It also allows me to do things like uh, setting up protected routes, so maybe a user needs a certain role in order to hit a certain endpoint. Uh, and all those things are baked into Spring Security, and it's really robust, really well documented, and so that was an easy choice for me. Okay, so once my back end was built, it's time to start focusing on the front end. And at this point, it's really nice because I have my back end built, I have my UI mocks, so now I can just take these two things and build my front end from them. For client code, I use React and TypeScript for every project. I know folks are you know, really getting into the Next.js realm, uh, but it's just something that I've never worked with before. I've used React all throughout my career, and it's something that I know I'll be able to get up and running quickly uh, and be super efficient in building any front end components. I use Material UI for all of the styling of my application. So this includes things like um, colors, you know, color themes throughout the application, uh, fonts, custom components, and Pretty much anything that goes into the application is styled with Material UI. I'm very comfortable with it, and I know that I'll be able to create things quickly uh, using Material UI. In terms of payments, so Dinner B will be a paid application. Uh, in order for users to use the application, they'll either have to pay a one-time fee or a monthly or yearly subscription. So to handle all of these, I'll be using Stripe, something that I've used in past applications. It's incredibly, incredibly well documented and it's just great for getting uh, set up inside your application without any hassle. All right, so let's talk about hosting the application. And currently, I'm actually not at this stage yet. I'm still building out the front end. At, at the moment, I'm running everything locally. I don't have anything hosted, and that's just kind of how I like to build applications. But at some point, obviously, I'm gonna have to get this on the internet for actual users to use. So in order to do this, I'll be using a variety of AWS services, most likely. Uh, in the past, I've used some platform as a service tools like Heroku. So if I'm getting to a point where I just want things up and running a bit more quickly, I'll probably use Heroku. But most likely, I'll be using various AWS services to get this hosted. Um, and again, that's what Heroku uses under the hood. But if I want to just do it all myself, it'll be uh, all within my, my AWS instance. For my Spring Boot application uh, and my React application, these will be Dockerized EC2 instances. For my Postgres database, this will be hosted on AWS RDS. Relational Database Store, I think that's what that stands for. Um, but you can host Postgres instances and get that hooked up to your uh, EC2 instance. There will be some type of DDoS protection, something like CloudFront. Building in public is uh, it's kind of scary because now you have all these eyeballs on your application. And if anybody wants to take advantage of it, and if you leave any vulnerabilities, people will take advantage of it. So uh, we'll have some type of DDoS protection as well. Some other miscellaneous AWS services that I'll be using to round out this whole application are uh, S3 for image storage. So a user is able to add an image to a recipe. So those images will be stored in S3. And I haven't gotten to this point yet, but I do believe that I'll be using SES, which is simple email service. Um, there is a component of Dinner B where a user is able to invite a guest user to a calendar. And I believe I'll be handling the email sending portion of all of that through SES. And in terms of technologies, that should wrap it up. Uh, it's a decent amount, but it's nothing crazy. This is a very simple application. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, and I wanted to use technologies that I'm comfortable with and that I know I'll be able to deploy quickly. I do want to reiterate, this is just what I'm using, and likely this will go through some evolution as I build more and more applications, but I think this will probably be the basis for a lot of the things that I build going forward. But always just do yourself the favor of using technologies that you are comfortable with and that you enjoy because if you are using something that you have to bang your head against the wall all the time just to figure out how to do one simple thing, you're gonna hate it and then you're gonna stop building your application. So just be kind to yourself 
and use things that you're comfortable with and that you enjoy. So like I said, if you are interested in seeing more about the application that I am building and all the features that go into it, make sure to check out the first devlog, I'll link that above. But I hope you found this video interesting. I always like to see and, and just learn from others about what technologies they're using to build their applications. And it's, it's cool to read papers from different companies and, and see what they're using as well. So if you're using something different, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'm curious to see what others are using, but I really appreciate you staying all the way through. Definitely subscribe for more SaaS related content and dinner B devlogs. Thank you a ton for watching all the way through and I will see you soon.